fans. On this channel, we have benchmarked dozens and dozens of fans. However, I am not happy with how we have done things and how basically everybody else has done things. And to explain or elaborate where I'm coming from, for the majority of this platform, fan reviews are done by slapping a fan on top of a radiator, doing some type of CPU load, and then comparing fans based on the resulting CPU temperature. Now, this is not a wrong approach. This is a, a good approach. However, it is the approach to measure a fan's performance based on the radiator. But if we have a look at the PQ scale of what Nokia puts out, you can see that that's not the case for every fan. This is just for radiator fan and having a fan on top of a heatsink generates a whole other set of requirements and having it as a case fan generates even more different requirements. And that's my problem with, with benchmarking fans in general. If you have a, a number based on top of a radiator performance, you cannot interpret how this fan will perform inside of a case as a case fan. Now the easiest way to get around this problem would be to build a regular PC, slap three fans in there, two in the front, one in the back, and then do some type of CPU load and measure the CPU temperature. However, the problem with that approach is that the numbers will be un... they will be readable, but all of them will be the same. It will be extremely hard to A, keep the ambient temperature like stagnated as hell, and the resulting number will be... or the differences between a good fan and a not so good fan will be so small that it's just impossible to compare hundreds of them on, on a single graph. And that's probably why everybody's just slapping them on top of radiators, because the margin of error if you just slap them inside of a case is huge and the results are skewed. And back then when we started I had a, let's say, a different approach to counteract this problem. We built a PC inside of a Fantex P500A and we had a Be Quiet Pure Rock, I believe, but we didn't install any fan on top of the heatsink. And what we created doing this was that the three fans, two in the front, one in the back, had a much bigger or had all of the impact on the overall CPU temperature inside of the, the case because there was no other fan. However, by doing that, I did do a, a little unexpected thing. Every fan that had a, a very high static pressure, so the pressure that, that it uh, blows air out, or the force that the air comes out in the back, the, those fans will be favored because they have enough force to push more air through the heatsink. Whereas raw case fans, let's say a Nokia NF, what is it, uh, S12A, it is just whispering air into the case. And the air will not go through the, the heatsink to a degree where a Fantex P30 will do it. So all of my benchmarks were slightly favoring static pressure, but not to a degree where just radiator testing would. So we did that for quite some time and the resulting numbers were readable, at least. You could distinguish a very good from a very bad fan, but then the problem was also that all of our numbers, because there was no fan on the heatsink, were expanded by like 3x, so the difference between a P12 and the best fan was like 10-15 degrees. And I had a lot of comments on understanding where that change comes from because it's way too big. And yes, it is by like 3x. We explained that, but it's still not perfect. The, the approach was still not as perfect as I want it to be. It is still slightly static pressure focused and all of the case fans were at the bottom of the graph, whereas they should have been a lot higher. So a new approach needs to be created and believe me, this is nothing easy to do. We cannot just take any random case, snap a couple of fans on there and then measure it out because we will get into the first issue where the numbers are so much pushed together that they are unreadable or if we use something like I did, we will, you know, expand them and we will favor something that we shouldn't be doing. So using just a case is not a, a good approach or not a good approach to distinguish many, many fans. Now, I have a solution, a weird one. Case, not possible, but a fan or a case fan is basically nothing else than a device that pushes air into a box with very, very little restriction 
And then on the other side, it's the same fan or any other fan that is pulling the same air out of the same box. So all we need is that damn box. And my solution is based on the Noctua NHP one, that gigantic passive cooler from Noctua. Now, it is a passive cooler. It is not supposed to be used with fans, but it can be used with fans. And if you take the scenario of a case fan, not, a radi not for radiators, not for heatsink, a case fan. A case fan does essentially nothing else than push air into a box and then pull the same air, now hot air, out of the same box. That's what a case fan does. It doesn't need to get through a, a heatsink, it doesn't need to get through a fin stack, it just needs to move air in and out of the box. And I believe if we use a Noxia P1 for this endeavor, we can create a scenario that has the most accurate numbers. Now the fins of the Noxia P1 are, are so much apart that you do not need any static pressure to get through them. And that's exactly what I need. Now hear me out, I'm, I'm not done with this. The next problem is that box, the box that the fan pulls air in and then pulls air out or pushes air in and pulls air out, we need that box. Now the first idea of course would be to take any random case and then somehow create a, a build using the P1 and then call it a day. However, I would still not be happy with it. I could do that, I could take some random case, but I am eager or I am focused on comparing all sizes of fans. So 120s or even smaller, 140s, 160s, 180s, 200s. I want to compare every fan to every fan. Now I have been called out on this multiple times, but I still stand by it. If a case in the front has 120mm mountings and 140mm mountings and the same in the back, like for example every Fantex case, every new Be Quiet case, most fractal cases and so on and so forth, if your case accept these different fan sizes, why shouldn't I be comparing different sizes of fans on the same benchmark? Because if a user is now building a PC and he needs to decide between an Arctic P12 and a P14, he needs to know what is better. I, I can't deliver him content on one half based on 120mm fans and one half based on 140mm fans because we have different benchmarks and then expect him to somehow interpret what the difference is between the two. No, he needs an a, a, a absolute number for everything. And that's what I'm trying to generate. And the problem with that is no case in the world has every fan mounting in the front and every fan mounting in the back. I could find a lot that have 200 mil mountings in the front and then maybe, maybe adapt that thing back to 120 and then start there but never in the back, so I will never be able to pull the same air out using the same fan. So the box that I need for this does not exist, and I looked for a long time, it doesn't. So I will build it. So the idea is to build a, a, a wooden box that houses all of the PC, including the Noxia P1 on top, then on two sides have a fan on, on, for intake, and on the other side, the fan for exhaust. And for the benchmark, we'll use the same fan. So all of the air that is being pushed in is equal to the air that is being pushed out by that other fan. That's the idea. And I believe if we combine that random ass box with the P1 cooler, we will generate the most case fan-like number that is possible. Plus, if we fine-tune the system, we will be able to fine-tune it to a point by over or underclocking the CPU to a point where we can expand or squeeze all of the numbers, hence allowing me to distinguish between good and bad fans as much as possible. Oh boy. <laughs> That's the idea. That's where we are heading. For the exact build that we are going to do, that's for another episode that's far, far away from today. First, we need to build that damn box and I already did some shopping for that and I didn't joke when I said that it's going to be made out of wood because I don't have the machinery to make, make it out of aluminum or steel or anything so it's going to be wood. Thankfully, <laughs> no, my local Globus Baumarkt already pre-cuts all of the wood so using 
every brain cell that I have left from my life, I try to pre design the whole thing in my head and wrote them about down a bunch of numbers and all of this it will make sense at some point let me walk you through all of this the idea is we have those two slightly bigger plates yes slightly bigger plates which should be mounted like this in between them we have this 300 by 300 plate which should be mounted tick, tick, like this how do I keep this now in place? Only with one hand. On the two sides where we have no plate, we have these 65 millimeter high ones. And if you now recognize the number 65, it's two and a half less than an SFX power supply. Because with the second one, we will close this box on the other side and slap another 300 by 300 piece on top of that, which is going to look like this. In between or in that bottom compartment, I wanted to install an SFX power supply because we don't need anything bigger for all of this. And then just close the box, drill a bunch of holes in the bottom and one on the side for the power cable and for air support of course. And then close the whole thing on the other side with this one. Then on the 300 by 300 plate, which is <laughs> sitting here, we will mount uh, the whole thing, motherboard, CPU, cooler, everything and then some type of mini 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 GPU without a fan. Everything will be going on here. From there, we will close the thing in the top with another 300 by 300 plate. So this is side, bottom, middle, side, top. Okay, so this is basically the whole box. And now you might uh, question why we have so many of these plates left. So my idea was, we will have two sides open, which are going to be 300 by 300 or 306 by 306, uh, 306 by 300 because of the borders. Anyway, those sides are still open and that's where these plates come into play. These plates are going to be mounted on the two sides and I want to drill in here round holes, which are uh, custom, well, custom, everything is custom made, but the holes are sized based on the fan that we are going to use. So we are going to prepare two plates for 120 mil fans, two plates for 140 mil fans and two plates for and so on and so forth. We will first start with 200 millimeter fans because I really wanted to benchmark those damn NF820s that I have. And yeah, that's that's the idea. I have no clue if all of my measurements are right. I sincerely hope so. I wanted to finish this, but that's the idea. But before I forget it, I have a bunch of more cool stuff. So these here, I didn't just purchase them because they look cool. No, they are supposed to go uh, in between or even all the way through. I will see that, but they are supposed to be mounted like this on each corner and the two side pieces will be mounted to them and it will be mounted to the bottom. So every this is just for like structural integrity, but there is more to it because I have purchased my favorite metal tool. These things here that I have no clue how to call. These things are supposed to be to be hammered into something relatively thin or first drilled and then hammered and it basically is a hole with a thread that will keep on the surrounding wood and this is really really cool because if I take a 300 by 300 plate where a fan is going to be mounted and I drill that hole and I smash this through what I can do is on the other side screw an M4 screw completely through it basically exposing one side with just a thread and the thing will keep on the thread of that little metal thing and then if I want to benchmark a fan I don't need to screw it into the wood if I do the mounting space correctly I can just position the fan on top of that and then I can use this little wing piece to completely close it down or mount the fan down Bloop, and it's on there that's the idea but that's just the part of mounting the fan to this random ass plate we also need to mount the random ass plate onto the whole box and the issue with that is it needs to be redoable multiple multiple times without destroying either the box or set plate and this is where these here are coming from or why I, I really needed to get them because we will do essentially the same thing with just longer screws where we push them through and then we mount the whole plate to the box using the same mechanic and then to be sure that the whole thing is to some degree airtight because what we need is a 
not sealed but almost sealed box where air is going in and out that's where this Primo Vorliege Band is uh, coming in. It's, it's basically some sort of foam that I will just glue around the box on the edge and then when I press this on and then you know clamp it down using these this foam is going to be squeezed sealing the whole thing basically that's the idea and then we just have some uh, glue and a bunch of screws and more screws and more of that tape oh boy this is the idea I have no clue how this will turn out the big issue is not if the concept will work I know the concept will work I could do this with the case and call it a day but I would really want to be sure to benchmark all types of fans across the board on the same machine using the same metrics and then compare each and every one to each and every one. So the only issue that could come out of this is that the whole box concept doesn't work, that I, I didn't do my measurements right, that's what could happen. I just hope it doesn't, but we will see about that. That is going to be for the next episode. For today, this is going to be it. Next week, we are going to start building this together. I have no clue how many episodes this is going to be. I hope not too many. I want to get done with things, but uh, yeah. Next week, we'll start you gluing using Holzloy. It's going to be fun. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.